while I was playing this early morning round at the Palatka Golf Course in Florida, I started to really think about the kind of the truth, the hard truth about the golf swing. And, you know, if you go back to when we've all, when we all started at some point in our lives, I started when I was about 15 and my neighbor played. He was my age and, and took me to a par three in the driving range. I was a baseball player my whole life. And, you know, some of the golf swing made sense and I hit some good shots, but hit a lot, a lot of bad shots. And from there, I've really enjoyed playing and trying to improve. But I think there are some issues with the way we've kind of been programmed into trying to improve our swing. And I'll break this down into should, should we concentrate our efforts in improving what our swing looks like or should we concentrate on scoring and I think that's really two two different areas they can go hand in hand obviously if your swing improves your scoring should improve but I think we have it backwards I think we spend 90 percent of our time looking at our swing on video and trying to you know either make our swing flatter or more upright or improve our impact position we we see these positions on video and we go okay we got to fix that and we spend 90 percent of our time kind of in the the minutia of our swing and 10 percent of our time on practicing what would actually help us improve our score which for the most part, is short game and putting. And if you go to any golf course or any range, you're going to see 90% of the people lined up on the uh, on the range and pounding away drivers and irons and 10% of the people over on the putting green and short game area. And sorry about the video, I accidentally hit uh, slow-mo on two or three holes here. I'll get back to the uh, shot tracer here in a few holes. But anyways, after, from my experience, after when I took up golf, it took me, you know, maybe two or three years of playing, you know, maybe once every couple weeks, especially with, uh, I had other sports and school and it wasn't until my, the summer before my senior year in high school that my brother and I played probably once a week, maybe even twice a week. And that's where I saw my most improvement. And I would say the swing I had then at 18 and, and how I scored for all intents and purposes, it is about the same as I do almost 40 years later. And I think that basically comes down to, you know, we each only have so much athletic ability and we're, we're really not going to improve on that. You know, it's what you're born with, your coordination and everything that goes along with what you can naturally do to create club, club, club head speed in any sport. So from there, you're only, you know, you. the way I look at it is uh, even though I played baseball, I was never, no matter how much training or instruction I got, I was never going to throw the baseball 90, 95 miles an hour. Just, just didn't have that athletic ability. I could get it up in the 80s, maybe. But I could train eight hours a day, 365 days a year, 
and was never, never going to have the athletic ability to create that kind of speed. And I think golf is the same way. So even with all of the lessons, I had, I've taken lessons once for a couple of years and it, it did improve my game. Um, but marginally, you know, I did start to break 80 for the first time. But the problem with that, I mean, not that it was a problem, but I spent hours and hours. I mean, I had the time. I was in my 40s, and I was able to put in the practice, and it was expensive. So, so yes, you can improve if you're in a position where you can put in the time, the money, the effort. But even then, I, I still had my basic same athletic ability, ball striking ability, as I did when I was 18. You know, where I improved on was 100 yards and in when I was taking lessons. And then when you stop, the downside is you will revert back to old habits and old muscle memory. Um, you know, things happened in my life. I got busy again at work and I, I couldn't keep up with the lessons and you take two or three months off and you go back and start playing again and you start uh, basically with your, <laughs> with your old swing. So the way I would go, you know, my plan from here on out is to, instead of working on fixing positions in my golf swing, I'm going to improve putting, chipping, you know, practice those two areas of the game. 90% of the time and in the ball striking 10%. So I hope that helps. If, uh, if you have any similar stories, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.